Calgary, Alberta. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and it uh, really is a, a pleasure and privilege to speak on behalf of Bill 205. I uh, speak in favour of Bill 205, the Advocate for Persons with Disabilities Act, and, and um, I, I want to very much thank the uh, Honourable Member for bringing this forward and, and uh, recognize the work uh, of the Member for St. Albert that she has done and her strong advocacy and, and uh, an action um, that she has uh, 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 taken on behalf of people with, uh, with the disabilities. Uh, that uh, action, I know, uh, predates her time in this assembly by, uh, by, by a lot, and so it's, uh, it's very much appreciated. But um, the uh, member for Calgary Northwest bringing this forward as well, I know this is something you're very passionate about, and I thank you very much for bringing this forward. Um, but for the vagaries of private members' bill draws, uh, and I think if, uh, if I'm to see my private members' bill this session come up, it will probably be the spring of 2023 by the time I, uh, my bill would be up. But, um, uh, I didn't do as well. But this is, quite interestingly, one of the uh, ideas that we had uh, talked about in my team as well, should we get high enough up in the bill draw. So without question, I absolutely would uh, uh, enthusiastically, uh, of course, will uh, we'll support this bill. Um, it, uh, it addresses uh, both issues that people who have uh, 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 disabilities uh, deal with on a daily basis, um, and those are some of the issues that they will deal with today, right now, on a daily basis. But what I like about the advocate role is that it will address challenges people with disabilities and their families and loved ones and caregivers deal with on an ongoing basis. And it's the kind of thing that, unfortunately, uh, will uh, will uh, likely always require someone to advocate uh, for people with uh, with disabilities. Um, and uh, I can tell you from the work that we do in my constituency office, uh, and I know, uh, I imagine all members uh, very likely deal with, uh, with some of these challenges uh, through their constituency offices and in their work as members. Um, the, the, the various uh, programs and, and uh, services that uh, are available uh, really are confusing. Uh, for uh, for people with disabilities, they're confusing with for 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 uh, 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 people who advocate for those uh, people uh, or who are their uh, their friends and family. Uh, and so, anything we can do to have a, an advocate role, similar to the seniors' advocate, to the uh, mental health advocate, uh, to parts of the role of the child and youth advocate, and uh, and others, I think can only uh, be uh, a positive thing. Um, there's a couple of examples that I, uh, I, I uh, noted as I prepared for this uh, debate today. Um, there um, uh, have been many challenges uh, raised to my office about the transition from services that are available uh, when you're uh, under 18 to the services that are available when you're uh, or turn 18. Uh, the, the, the person's needs haven't changed. Uh, but the funding sources change, the programs that are available change. Uh, sometimes uh, you, uh, families and people with uh, disabilities find that they have less in the way of services. And so it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's uh, uh, an advocate can certainly help not only uh, people who are dealing with the uh, transition uh, navigate the system as it is now, but they can also help advocate for change uh, from uh, from government to ensure that that transition is far smoother, that uh, services are provided in a, in a way that's much more consistent, that better meets the needs uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of a variety of different people with, with different needs. Um, the other is, is uh, a constituent of mine who's raised with me the issue of building codes. Uh, she's in a, in a wheelchair uh, and uh, has uh, troubles with uh, bu buildings that are officially built to Alberta's building codes, uh, but she finds that doors for ha perhaps will open the wrong direction on certain buildings, and she'll end up in a vestibule in what she calls squish me doors. And she finds that she can't push the button, wheel out of the way, and then wheel back in and get actually through the door. Now, the building meets building code. No one's breaking any rules, but does she actually have access? Is that building, in fact, accessible to her? Uh, and the answer, in many cases, is no. Uh, and so these are just a couple of examples that I thought of uh, just off, uh, just, just as I uh, re reflected on what uh, sorts of things that a, a, a disability advocate could, uh, could possibly, uh, possibly do. Uh, the member for Calgary Mountain View, I think, rightly has raised the question of resourcing and ensuring that uh, this is not just a token position, that it's not just there in name only, that in fact they have uh, the, the, uh, uh, the tools they need to do the job, the resources they need to do the job, and as it has been noted in uh, debate, uh, it's very likely that in giving appropriate resources to a disability advocate uh, that we uh, will actually save money. It 
will actually not only will it improve the lives of people with disabilities, but it will actually save money. Uh, and uh, I would hope as we go through the, uh, the debate and the discussion here that we can learn a little more about specifically where uh, that, uh, that can happen and, and actually what some of that cost-benefit uh, 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 calculation might look like because I think it's likely very compelling uh, that, uh, again, not only are we helping on a human level, but we're also helping the government uh, save money because we're improving people's quality of life, we're keeping them out of, uh, uh, out of, uh, out of hospital, uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're ensuring that the services they receive uh, are most uh, efficient and, uh, and effective. Um, so, uh, enthusiastically, I will uh, support Bill 205. Again, thank the member for Calgary Northwest for bringing it forward uh, and uh, look forward to listening to further comments. Thank you, Madam Speaker.